G'day folks, Uncle Nackers here, and in today's video, I'm going to share with you five really cool mitosaur tricks that you need to know to get the most out of your mitosaur. Let's do this. Now look, is it just me, or is there nothing more satisfying than making the perfect cut with your mitosaur? Now come on, don't be shy. Is this you as well? Let me know down below. And the secret to achieving these results time after time is just to check and make sure that your mitosaur is actually cutting straight and square, both horizontally as well as straight up and down. And that can easily be checked by holding a square hard up against the fence and then lining that square up to the blade. Now just make sure that the square isn't touching any of those teeth as that can throw things off. And if you find that the blade is running a little bit off, just simply loosen the screws on the base plate and rotate the plate until the blade lines up perfectly with the square. Then just simply tighten the screws and away you go. Now look, every now and then you'll be required to make a mitre cut that goes beyond the cutting capacity of your mitre saw. For example, my saw can cut mitres up to 60 degrees, but what if you need to cut an angle at say 65 degrees? Well, don't stress, because this is how you do it in three simple steps. Grab yourself some strong double-sided tape and stick that to the fixed part of the base plate and not the part that rotates. Then place some scrap wood on top of that tape and cut a 45 degree angle both ways. Now with our saw set back to zero degrees, just there, we've basically created a 45 degree angle and this is where the magic happens. So let's say you need to cut a 65 degree mitre. All you need to do is to take 45 of 65 and you're left with 20. So set your saw to 20 degrees, place the stock hard up against the 45, keeping it nice and flat, and then cut the stock. And there you have it, a 65 degree angle. And say, for example, you wanted to cut a 70 degree mitre. Well, take 45 away from 70, which gives you 25. So set your saw to 25 degrees and away you go. It's as simple as that. You're welcome. Now I love this next tip and I think you will too. Now look, we've all done it. You've cut a piece of wood, you go to install it, only to find that it's just a bee's doohickey too long, which is really frustrating. But it's a great way to take just a smidge off that without having to measure anything. All you need to do is to lower your blade and then butt the piece that you need to take a smidge off up against it. And this will push the blade across just a hair, which is all that you need. Then just lift the blade up and as you can see, as you lower it, it will ever so slightly come in contact with the wood, which is just enough to cut a very small amount off. Hey, since we're talking about angles and stuff, how's this? I was just going for a walk earlier today in the scorching heat and I saw a 90 degree angle resting under a tree. And I thought to myself, Wow, it must be hot. Looks like 90 degrees in the shade. <sighs> I'll get my coat. Now, if you have two boards that are two different widths and you want your external corner and internal corner to match on a mitered corner, then a 45 degree angled cut isn't going to work. So all you need to do to make this tricky situation work is just to simply trace the boards on top of one another. Place one board here, mark it, and then place the other board on top and mark that one. Okay. 
Now personally, to transfer that angle to the mitre saw, I like to get my bevel gauge set to the angle required and then adjust the mitre saw till the blade just comes in contact with the blade on the bevel gauge and away you go. Now check this out folks, our external and internal corners now magically match up on a mitered corner. How cool is that? Now just very quickly, if you're looking for ideas on what to build with your mitre saw, I have a library full of project plans which may be of interest to you. And I'll leave a link to those down below. So do yourself a favour and check those out after you finish watching this video. Good stuff. Alrighty, back to the mitre saw tips. Now this next method is possibly one of the most important tips that you can take on board when using a mitre saw. Without doubt, one of the scariest operations when using a mitre saw is when you need to cut yourself a small block of wood. If we take a close look at the saw, you'll notice that when cutting a small piece, there's nothing back here to support the work. So there's a tendency for the blade to drag the piece in this direction, which is very dangerous, as that can either drag your fingers in with it, or it can split the piece out at a great rate of knots, which is particularly frightening. And if you check out the kerf plate, or the throat of your mitre saw, which is this piece here, you'll notice that the groove is just too wide and isn't suitable for cutting small pieces as that small piece will tend to tilt into that groove during the cutting process which is never ideal and also sometimes the small piece that you cut off will finish up inside that housing which is always a pain to try and retrieve. Now the solution to these issues is to make yourself a quick and easy zero tolerance plate. Did I just say zero tolerance plate? I meant zero clearance plate. I think I've been watching too much of the news. Which offers complete support on the bottom as well as the back and you'll also end up with a better finish by reducing tear out. Now I've simply made mine out of a sheet of 7mm plywood and I've also added a cleat underneath on either side that neatly fits over the base of the saw which makes setting up quick and easy. And then once you cut through the fence and the base, you now in effect have made yourself a very handy zero clearance plate. Now to keep your fingers away from that blade that has very sharp teeth, I've made myself this jig out of a block of wood, some plywood, some rubber, and a bit of sandpaper. And when I apply pressure to the top of that jig, it holds that piece securely in place and also keeps my fingers away from the blade during the cutting process. Righto, let's give it a crack and see how it works. Now as you can see from the demonstration, the combination of the zero clearance plate and the very nifty little small piece holder thingamajig works an absolute treat and in my opinion is an absolute must have accessory for your mitre saw. Now look, while you're here, if you're interested in more nifty tips and tricks, you might want to check out my other mitre saw video which should be up on the screen over there, somewhere. Alrighty, after all that, I think it's time for a cup of tea. So till next time, be good, be safe, and I'm out of here. Cheers.